welcome. It's nice to see people back live and in person um, rather than where we are. But uh, we are uh, streaming this and we are recording it. And so if everyone in the audience, we would like to know that uh, because of the maximum capacity of various rooms in our district, unfortunately we're not allowed to have as many outdoor events as we would like to. So that's why we want to make sure we're giving the opportunity to this stream as well for that. Um, usually when we come to a school setting, the room is filled with children. Uh, when we have our opening meeting in the fall, we always rotate between buildings and we always see what's going on in the lives of our students. Um, obviously, we changed that a little bit this year, um, especially for our first few months, uh, because quite honestly, we're still trying to get used to all the situations and the settings and also want to make sure uh, that our students um, get the rest they need each night um, so that way they can start school uh, fresh in the morning with that. So uh, we will really be missing that. That is, I know, the board's favorite part of every meeting, and I know it sure is mine, hearing from the kids themselves, but in some way we will be incorporating it throughout the years. Um, so with that said, um, opening of school has been um, a topic uh, since March, and then really since June, um, how do we safely reopen? And it feels really good uh, to be here on Monday, September 21st, with students in session, in session for 10 days now double digits, and so uh, that is really great news for all of us at Southland Falls, and um, although all we all wear masks, we quickly learned that you can see smiling students in their eyes, and you see how excited they are, and where they dance around, uh, whether it's over the screen or in the classroom, and really that's what keeps us going all the time, is that excitement. And so just to kind of kick off our first meeting, um, I did ask um, an elementary person, a middle school person, a high school person, just to kind of report out to the board in general um, on you know, opening, where we are, what the, what they're finding, you know, and some of those things for that. And so um, I will uh, do it in uh, elementary order. So uh, Carl, if you don't mind coming up, taking the mic, and just kind of give a brief overview of the world of elementary. <laughs> <laughs> well, throughout the summer, I don't know if any of you picked up on this, but the students would gently remind us of the importance of a pivot plan. <laughs> very subtle on superintendent's conference, but we have a teacher pivot plan. Well, as an elementary school principal, I can tell you that pivoting from a hybrid model to 100% in person learning was quite the undertaking. And I think all the elementary school principals, it was very challenging. But thanks to the help of our facilities and business people, who oh my God, these men, they went up to the uh, middle school, they got those desks out, they brought them over here. Not only did they clean them, but they had them all over them. They put them in all the rooms. It was constant day after day, a lot, a lot of work. Regents department, can't thank them enough, food service. Um, our nurses, Brissy Tracy, she was so patient with me. Every day I'd ask her, wait, Brissy, does this process sound okay? Does this plan sound like a sound plan? She put X's on these tables. For those of you at home, if you can see this, there, we can only fit 45 people in our cafeteria. And there's X's on the table for the students so that they need to sit. Part of that was done with the help of Mr. Tracy and our other nurses, Janice Middleton, and again, nurses throughout the district. So it was a lot of work that I want to tell you to see the students come into the building was so moving. And it was just, it was great. It was like they hadn't left. We were so happy. One little boy was telling his teacher, he was running out back over here and he said, I'm alive again. I'm alive again. <laughs> I, I think that they're adapting really well. You know, we want to keep them mentally well. We want to keep them physically safe. And that's what we're doing. And um, it's all due to lots of hard work. And Christine and Tim being constantly available 24 hours. Um, couldn't have done it without them. So, anything else you want to know? Anything specific? What 
Um, how about the middle school? Um, Mr. Ruby, I know you're here. Uh, the first thing I want to say is uh, thank you for letting me know where all my guests are playing. For us, the opening went surprisingly smoothly. We had so many changes that we were putting in place. A reopening plan that had a lot of, a lot of moving pieces. Um, and all of our staff worked together to make it happen for kids in a way that was really magical. When kids came in, even though they had masks on, you could tell because of their cheeks and their eyes, the smiles that they had on their faces. And as I went around and talked to them, they all said the same thing. We're just happy we're back. We're just happy we're back. You know, we're saying things to them like, we're sorry you can't use your lives. Said, we don't care. We're just happy we're back. We're sorry you can't all sit together and lunch. We don't care. We're happy to be back. Uh, that was the answer all day long on both days. Because how often do you get two open days in school year? With two groups, it was almost essentially the same. The responses were the same, and it's one thing to see the looks on kids' faces as they're coming in. It's another thing to experience watching staff's faces as a new group is come in just a few days later from the first group. So even though there are a lot of ways that this could have gone terribly wrong for us, um, it went extremely, extremely well because. We have staff, and I'm talking about everybody. I, 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 can't, I can't say thank you to everybody, somebody, but the truth is, as a team, everybody worked together to make those open days and the days that have come after just very successful and meaningful for students. They knew what the challenges were and took care of everything. No matter what, we said, we'll figure it out. Whenever we get involved, we said, we'll figure it out. Some of the things uh, that we didn't expect, you know, we were really, really upset about the not having the tradition of kids, especially the sixth graders, and learning how to, I mean, learning how to up in their lockers, not going from, you know, in the general years and everything else, the things that they take out three weeks later because they realize there's no one for their lives. Um, we were really worried about that. And then once the kids came in, at the end of the first day, we all kind of looked at each other and said, wow, that went a lot. That was probably one of the smoothest opening days we had. Because the kids didn't have any anxiety around opening their lockers. They weren't worried about, for some reason, they always worried about being late in class on the first day of school. We were not punishing for that. Um, but there was none of them. They weren't, they weren't worried. The, the noise in the hall was gone. Kids were always on time in class. Uh, they figured out how to carry things in the backpack without turning it into you know, a 200 pound pack. Um, you know, just some, some of the things that we, we had expected. Mr. Ramsey, of course, was elated that he wasn't called to a single jam locker call <laughs> that he's normally uh, responding to 1,700 times on the, on the end of the week. So, um, as I said before, it, it went very well, extremely well. The kids um, adjusted very quickly to the rules that we have in place. They're, they're still doing it. Um, it does have those, these rules and protocols are always in place for them. They're doing a great job. And again, I want to say thank you to everybody who helped us be able to do that again. I can't listen because it's everyone from, from every single department who made, made the opening possible. So thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. Finally, the high school, Mr. Modi. Mr. Modi likes the mic, so I have to remind him that I'm going to time him and his speaking right now. Not only why, I'd like to go right in person, not with a screen. <laughs> so largely, I can rehash what Mr. Viviano and Mr. Ruby said. Really, it was the story of a lot of people working as hard as they could to think of ways to overcome hurdles they didn't even see coming until we were already you know, looking right at them in the face. And you know, I, I, I'm not going to look everywhere I go. Um, really, it has just been just unpredictably smooth in terms of our opening at the high school. Uh, you know, students have really just dodged what it is we're asking them to do. And honestly, the, the biggest anxiety that I've seen are just coming from staff that really just want to get it right. They just want to do it right by kids. They want to make sure that the experiences are as, as calm and strict as they can possibly be. And they're trying things that I don't think I, I would ever imagine us trying for with education, but somehow we are finding a way. 
and I've been really the reason that students by and large are kind of doing this they ask. One, they understand the seriousness of the situation, and two, they, I think they really just respect how hard everyone's working to be in the place that they want to be. So, and I think um, one of the ways that still keeps itself are the number of kids that have you know, went virtual and are slowly calling and requesting to be in hybrid. They want to get back into the high school. So I, you know, I think that's, that's wonderful. Uh, you know, and honestly, it, the other only thing I would point to is it may be an amazing side effect of this. Uh, Mr. Grief and I spent time putting up with the one-way hallway system at the high school. And I don't want you to worry. South High is going to solve <coughs> childhood obesity. Judge by the number of steps kids are now taking around the building. We got it locked down. So but other than that, you know, the reports on the block schedule maybe that day. I, I talk to kids every single day about it. And, you know, two weeks in, it's still a big change. But I'm seeing almost a universally positive response to it. We talked today, you know, you know that saying that the, the days are long, but the years are short. I had a conversation with two ninth graders today that depending on the class, sometimes the blocks are long, but the days are short. So it's two within its own time. There was a ninth grade boy who was very happy to share that. So, you know, all, all things considered, I, I couldn't be happier and I couldn't be prouder about how my school is Okay. I think when we think about all these things and hear from our administrators, uh, every part of a school system completely got turned up and down. And so no matter who I put up here and which conversation they talk about and which person is the leader of it, nothing is the same as it was last March. Um, because we have to look at it from a new lens and a new way of being uh, for that. And so um, I'm thankful to, again, everyone, as, as Mr. Ruby said, because it isn't about one person anymore. It's about everybody pitching in to do that. Um, uh, next meeting, we'll invite other administrators here to talk about you know where we are then in October. Um, so we will get to hear from all the administrators and you know all the department heads at some point um, on on various topics throughout the year um, and what's going on. Um, I did invite one more um, administrator to speak uh, briefly tonight because I think one of the other topics that comes up is that. School for children isn't just about the time in classes and academics. It's about that social emotional side. It's about the extracurricular activities. And obviously, one of the extracurricular activities we talk about a lot is athletics. Um, and I know that um, Mr. Bruce can give you an update on where we are in the foothills. And uh, today was day one where we started talking to students about all of athletics. So, Mr. Bruce, you want to come up and just give a quick overview? Yep, so today was day one of our fall season one. Uh, athletics are kind of play uh, with our football council. Um, but before we get into that, if, uh, if you've been on on site over the past uh, couple of months, you've seen pretty, pretty awesome changes. Uh, the landscape is transforming over there uh, drastically, and it's kind of really sharp. So we just installed two new scoreboards. If you see people digging in them right now, they're putting in a brand new flight pool to, uh, to join our scoreboard. Uh, additionally, uh, we've put scores tables in the gym, updated and modified our, our middle school scores table with, uh, with new inserts. Um, on top of that, we effectively cut the age of our uniforms in half this past year with our uniforms and replacement cycle. We from over two years to just over four years with our cycle. We have about eight more teams to go uh, before we get down into single digits with all, all our average age of um, what remains. So we're making a lot of progress in that regard. But what everybody wants to hear about is how fall season is progressing. So uh, once we got our return to play guidance from this club, we met at the Foothills Council uh, and put together uh, a, probably a, a 20 page uh, packet on return to play. Um, we took what this was put out to us, uh, we broke it down, simplified it. Um, at some time, some point, uh, in some instances, we we're a little more stringent and more strict as to what we were expected because we wanted to have continuity from the school day to that curricular piece. Um, some very difficult decisions had to be made in that return to play guidance, such as uh, mandating that all our athletes and coaches remain in mass 100% of the time. Um, it's something that if people have been following uh, the collegiate world and the professional world that is limiting spectators to uh, attend personnel that are needed the events on their own, trying to reduce the risk. So, what our 
primary goal was was to limit um, variables that would remove us from our current instructional model uh, from the hybrid to pushing back into the fully virtual. So we understood the importance of having kids back in the school building. So we wanted to protect that the best we could. And so with that, we offered uh, boys and girls cross country, girls tennis, and uh, excuse me, boys golf. Um, so with that, our trials today, we had 73 athletes come out for, for those three sports. Um, unfortunately, we are going to have to make cuts because we can only transport so many individuals to events. Um, with that, our coaches have been uh, in constant contact with one another and myself uh, with Ms. Orr uh, regarding, regarding the screening, um, go kits where we're putting together second kits with the good performance and uh, helping out to maintain that level of With that, the sports that have been moved from fall one, uh, they have been put back to fall two. So uh, nothing has been canceled yet. And that's, that's the key piece to remember when we're going to do this and going into our condensed season model, is that no sports have been canceled. They've only been postponed. So our target date right now as a football council is to continue looking at the November 30th date. Um, if that does not hold true, we will most likely push back to the January 4th for our winter. Uh, our fall sports two would now kick off on March one, and then spring sports would be pushed back in April nineteenth. So it gives everybody roughly a seven to nine weeks. Um, so still a lot to be determined as we know it can change daily, um, but we do have uh, plans in place, and uh, we can talk. Um, we do that as an executive committee meeting on the twenty third of this Wednesday, and we're hoping to hear more about the. Mr. Uh, you know, I think it, um, as with anything, um, slow and steady is really helping to go. Um, because every time we reopen something, we put ourselves out there. And so as the district has gone slow, we've been thoughtful about the speech. And whenever we add something, we want to make sure it follows the protocols that we have in school because they're working. So one way they're working, I watch kids turn around, they look at our life. Because uh, they were going the wrong way the other day, um, and then I realized I was probably going the wrong way the other day. I apparently go the exact opposite way that Mr. Modi and Mr. Green did at all. So I have to get better at on the arrows, not the kids. Uh, but, you know, all of our students are really doing those things. And, and so, you know, I, I think, you know, as athletics we talk about, we also are going to talk about extracurricular activities, kindergarten through 12th grade. Again, there was a lot of moving parts, so it was slow and steady. Uh, they're not canceled, okay? You may not have heard anything about them yet. Uh, but we will be working through all of them to try to get this to reconnect. Uh, probably starting virtually and then we went from there on that. Um, so um, you know, thank you to the four of you for coming out tonight and uh, and you know giving us updates on that. Uh, Mr. Uh, Elder did you have to bring them? No, thank you. So I guess the one thing that starts with all three Another exciting part of tonight um, is that we have the opportunity uh, to recognize uh, our teachers who received tenure this year. Um, and by all means, that was probably more of a stressful thing than people can actually imagine uh, because all rules were on hold until the state education department stated um, that uh, we could yes and we do this. Uh, but along the way, uh, my hope was to always work with all of these uh, fine people in the room to let them know that. You know, uh, pandemic or no pandemic, we knew that they deserved tenure, and so we just had to work through the process. So it is a very exciting night tonight uh, to be able to uh, give uh, the certificates to all of you. Uh, normally, the um, Catholic Association uh, puts on cupcakes and snacks for all to share, but we are not sharing food right now. So uh, the Catholic Association did uh, give five each of you a plant. Um, so that way, uh, there's something for you to recognize this moment. Sorry, kids are coming. The cupcake is always the highlight of the evening, and it's just not. Um, but that is what it is. Uh, so, uh, I don't know, uh, Mr. Uh, Elder, you want to present them? Our first person with tenure is Melissa Abdu. Uh, 
Congratulations to Matt Beck. I have to say that the four years I waited was mainly for the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Matt. Give me that back. Our, our next one is Craig Whitney and Adam Brown. Policy committee meeting um, this evening, right before uh, this board of education meeting, and uh, the majority of that conversation was focused on uh, our code of conduct policy 5300. Uh, this is a rather large policy; I think it's about 49 pages long, uh, and this is really encompasses the processes and procedures that all six of our school buildings uh, kind of work in regard to the rules and regulations of their building, and so. Uh, this is something that we try to review fairly often, but it is uh, quite an undertaking, and I really appreciate the work that our policy committee members have done. Uh, we have planned on uh, looking over this and, and adopting a new code of conduct last 
year, but obviously that got interrupted uh, with our building closures. So we plan to have this on the uh, board agenda in October. Um, we're taking a little bit more time to kind of uh, look through it and look at the language. There are a number of spots where language needs to be updated, especially around areas like um, our dress code, uh, as well as restorative language, restorative practices language that the New York State School Boards Association has uh, worked to put into codes of conduct that we'll be adopting as well that align with our policies K-12. Uh, and so that's the majority of the work that we've been focused on. Uh, our building, our middle school and high school administrators uh, joined us at the policy committee uh, and they were able to talk about the work that they've been doing, uh, especially related to uh, student voice and how they've been meeting with kids to uh, get input on the code of conduct. And so um, we'll have more for you at the October board. And I don't know if any of the committee members have anything to add. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. 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 Motion from Sam, second from Jeff. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And it's been approved unanimously. Does anyone miss the roll call vote? Under school business management, so any comments or questions regarding the set items C through G? Just a couple comments, Bill. Yeah. Um, obviously, on um, letter F, we have a few contracts that we are approving. Uh, for um, this board meeting, uh, one being uh, the spiritual consultants of the junior prom. Um, as, as you read uh, the um, minutes and minutes, you'll see that there is a COVID 19 pandemic clause added to this contract so that the school will work with for a future date and shift if possible. So we're always appreciative of our partners in the area that realize that schools are in a hard position uh, based on some of the rules now. So we keep moving forward and staying positive that it will be different next year, but we do have those things in place for our contract. I have a quick question regarding the classroom needs. The administrative uh, offices for both seats, they're not lo no longer on um, the Cat Street. Did I say that right? They're on the cross street now. They're still on the cross street now? We just moved back there this about a month ago, probably. Um, they're going. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Appreciate that clarification. There's no further comments or questions. And a motion to approve and set item C through G. Uh, John moved. Kevin seconded. All in favor? Aye. And that is unanimous. Under personnel, instructional personnel, we have been set item H through Q. Are there any comments or questions? Just a couple things on this section because it is a little confusing. Um, again, with reopening schools, uh, everything is turned upside down. And one of the areas um, that was necessary to do was to um, look to how we were going to actually run the virtual school. Uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, but specifically kindergarten through 5th grade. And um, with the number of people being at about 17% of our population that wanted that option, we knew that was significant enough that we had to think out of the box and partner with other schools to create um, platforms that are actually completely virtual right now. And so we have that um, at the kindergarten to fifth grade level. Um, but in order to reopen schools, as Carl mentioned, from 15% to 100%, you couldn't just fill that without filling the position here to ensure that we have low numbers in our classes uh, for that. And so uh, the term position of letter H for the board, that is a full year leave of absence that somebody has asked for. And then for letter J, those long-term subs for the most part are COVID-related. There are a few on some maternity leave on there, but for the most part, uh, they are um, long-term because it's for the first trimester, uh, because we ask people to reevaluate the first trimester how things are going. Um, and then if it, we still need the virtual school, we'll continue with them at the first trimester. And 
Uh, we did also on the traffic work with the faculty association because with the large number of the new teachers working in the building every day and with all of the confusion that we're all facing in trying to understand all the new rules, we wanted to make sure that we had mentors available to reach groups of people. And so you'll see letter L uh, talks about those groups of people there uh, for them. Um, and then my final one is letter two, ABR. Um, as of right now, um, the state has said that ABR moves forward as normal. Uh, we had a new ABR approval last year, uh, which um, is uh, which works for us, uh, but we have to still start our observations. And so each September, we have to certify all the administrators in order to be able to do that. Okay. Thank you, Kristen. Is there any further comments or questions? I have a motion to approve consent items H2Q. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second. Thank you. Then instructional personnel, we have consent items R through W. Are there any comments or questions? That's just a couple things on here. Uh, for that, um, you'll see a uh, letter F. Um, we have some appointments that we put under COVID appointments. Um, again, in the abundance of caution and for the need to make sure that we're supporting um, all of our people, we added an, a second nurse uh, to help cover the both the program, but the other part of it is then still working for the district. And right now, while Christine is down at Ballard, um, Ed Potter retired, and then we rehired him in a temporary capacity. We like to do that right now around here, uh, but uh, we knew that with the additional disinfecting and cleaning and training that goes along with that, uh, Ron and his group would need some support there, and so Ed Potter's overseeing some of that. And then we are trying to hire more cleaners. Um, we did hire uh, Pat Sullivan as a cleaner, who we held out in Tanglewood uh, for, for the short term future. Uh, we do have a retirement. Um, Alan Young uh, has been with us for a number of years. Uh, he was was our first teaching assistant position uh, that we created, and he's been overseeing the private recovery program longer than I've been here. Um, he really uh, took hold of that, and when you think about our private recovery program being online, it was virtual before the word virtual was really a thing, um, and we had to work with the business a long way for that. And so um, I'm appreciative of all the work, both in the classroom and just with our children in general, have done. So I, I congratulate Alan as he begins his retirement. Does anyone have any further comments or questions? There being none, they have a motion. Motion from Jen and second from Kim. All in favor? Aye. They've been approved unanimously. We did receive our special education CPSC CFD recommendation. If there are no comments or questions, they have a motion that we accept that recommendation. Motion from Kevin, second from Lisa, was it? Yeah, sure. Second from Lisa. <laughs> All in favor? And they've been approved unanimously. Under educational items, we have consent items Y through Z. Are there any comments or questions? Well, we have our two student representatives with us this evening. Uh, uh, Anika Curry, Anika, if you don't mind standing up and just waving, we can see you behind your mask. That's it, perfect. Uh, so congratulations and welcome to the board and uh, Jennifer, if you don't mind, standing up and kind of waiting for the group. Um, it's been a long standing tradition to have student reps, and, and I'm always appreciative when we have so many districts. And, and one of the goals that Mr. Bowie and I have had is really start to think about how we can have a student voice, uh, not only in the Board of Education, but in these conversations. Because all the changes are happening are happening to all of us for the first time. And that student perspective is going to be an interesting part. So uh, we look forward to you two working with us. We look forward to the other students being available in some capacity as well throughout this. So congratulations to each. And then letter D, uh, we do have our first read of some of these policies. Uh, some, of, some of these uh, are related to our um, Every Student Succeeds Act uh, updates. And then others were uh, general recommendations by uh, NISA for first reading on that. Is there any other comments or questions? There being none, I have a motion to approve consent items Y through Z. Motion 
Annie and Jeff. Uh, John moved, Jeff second. All in favor? All right. It's been approved unanimously. For the board president information, a uh, brief comment I'd like to make. This past Thursday with the Adirondack Area School Board Association, combined with the Saratoga County School Board Association, uh, held at the Queensbury Hotel, both virtually and in person. Uh, the, program, the program was basically uh, NISPA represent, representatives uh, that came to us and did an update on their processes and to introduce himself being the new executive director, Robert Schneider, which I believe lives in the Saratoga area. It's interesting. Uh, legal counsel, Jay Warona, the uh, government relations director, Brian Fessler, who uh, said a pretty good decent thing, expecting a fine amount of advocacy on behalf of all the school districts in New York State and how much time they spend in uh, the standards, if you will, uh, working on our behalf. And lastly, there was a uh, member relations director, Barry Nipwistle, who spent time explain to everyone how the virtual municipal convention for this year was going to work. Uh, any of my colleagues, Christine, Kevin, John, any other further comments that you would like to add regarding that? Thank you. I'll turn it over to you, Christine. Uh, so, um, in topics other than reopening, um, the board did approve um, to move forward with a merger study with for Edward, and, and I know that there's some information out about that. Uh, one of the things that we did since our last update on this is we created a uh, for Edward Southland Falls merger study website, and that is linked to both for Edward homepage and to our homepage. Um, so that way, all the information goes to both communities at the exact same time. Um, both boards are going to have the opportunity to hear from our uh, merger study company on September 30th uh, to review their plan and their process. Uh, one of the things that I'll be working on this week uh, going forward with that is uh, we have decided that the committee is made up of six community members, four teachers, two staff members, and an administrator. And so I'll be working with each association to try to come up with representatives for that. Uh, for the dates that they will be there. Uh, some meetings will be in person uh, whenever possible uh, to be able to have those conversations, and others may need to be virtual, and will just be decided on a case by case basis, but we already have the dates of all those, and that will start in November. Um, if you are a community member and you are watching this evening and you are interested in being part of that committee, or for my person right here, if you're interested in being part of that committee, <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Um, there is a, a, form, a Google form on that website uh, to register and sign up. And if we have too many people, we'll um, probably uh, draw the names out of the hat um, or something like that at the board level to make sure that we have representation by all of that. So um, it's definitely uh, moving along. It feels slow right now because we're just trying to collect information and get things together uh, for them to start working on. But uh, once September 30th comes and then once November comes, it will get started. So I, so I just wanted to touch quickly on um, our virtual school and give you an update on that. That started in earnest uh, last Monday, and um, I kind of wanted to clarify a little bit because we have kind of two concurrent virtual experiences going on in the district. Um, when we refer to virtual school, what we're really talking about is the five day per week experience that our students who opted not to be in person are having. Um, we have individual teachers who are uh, teaching virtual 100% of the time at our K through five level. At our six through 12 level, we have uh, classroom teachers who are teaching both virtual sections and in-person sections. Uh, so it's a little bit different at each level. Carolyn Salato has been the, uh, is the principal for our virtual school and it's certainly been trial by fire for her um, she's risen to the challenge, which nobody is surprised about. Um, but it's been really kind of a, a learning experience all along, and even going on into today, we had a meeting. Uh, we partnered with two school districts. We partnered with Glens Falls and Abraham Wing. Um, and uh, we're working uh, with uh, students in all of those schools. So uh, kids share teachers, and, and uh, there are students from each of those districts in, in various classrooms. Um, 
one of the most exciting things to see, I think, has been the excitement with which both the adult and the students have come when it, when it comes to uh, creating their learning spaces. And so Gerilyn uh, has created a Padlet which allows uh, teachers and families to, to share their spaces online. And the pictures, uh, I'll make sure to put some of them in the Friday report this week for you. Um, the pictures are great, and the families are, are um, really going all out and making these separate spaces for their kids. And some of the teacher spaces are just amazing. Um, the time and energy that they put into making that a uh, special experience for their kids. Um, so uh, the other virtual experience is our remote learning days. And those are as part of our hybrid uh, learning experience with our students come in person in grades 6 through 12, uh, two days a week, and our hybrid three days a week. Uh, at the elementary school, our students are in person four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, and they are hybrid on Wednesday. Uh, and I think, to be honest with you, we're still learning as we go. And it's one day at a time. Uh, we had our first Wednesday last week, and I, I don't know if it's, it's good or bad for the folks in the high school, but one of the benefits of us being in the high school now is, you know, Christine and I shout, we're going to the high school, and we just step outside our door. Uh, and so I wandered around the high school last week uh, on Wednesday, and it was great. I mean, people were sitting at their desks, they were working with kids, they were, they were up and about, they were at their boards, kids were interacting. So um, as much as it's a learning experience, it's a learning by doing, which I think is, is really important. I would imagine that the two words that teachers are probably sick and tired of hearing right now are synchronous and asynchronous. So we're trying really hard not to say those words. Um, but I'm just really impressed with the way that uh, folks have met this challenge head on. Um, and we're going to continue to learn and we're going to continue to kind of change that the way that we need to. Um, the, the main reason that we have that uh, Wednesday uh, is because we really wanted to evaluate uh, what cleaning was going to be like during the week and whether we needed that at that day uh, to make sure that everything was sanitized. And so we continue to evaluate that. The October schedule was uh, just shared with families, um, or just it will be, will be shared with families um, very shortly um, so that folks will have an idea of what that month is going to look like. And we're really trying to take it on a month by month basis because, again, we just don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So we appreciate everyone bearing with us. Um, we appreciate the flexibility of the families um, and of the staff, and I'm just really impressed with the growth that I've seen in such a short time. Mr. Doggett, do you have a sense of how many students are in the virtual school? Um, I want to say between all three schools, it's a little over 400 students. Is that true? Yeah. And then there's uh, 132, figures, and 111 last time I checked with that number. Um, about that, I think. So a little over 700. Yeah. Is there any steps into the stuff? Yes, you I do try to call it coordinate, Mr.